so, hey, my name is Dan. I, uh, I'm a student at UMass Amherst, and uh, I've been working with uh, Taz Dreidra and Neha Narula on uh, doing some stuff with the front running and uh, time off puzzles, and which I'll just explain. So, uh, yeah, so the goal of this, of this whole work, which I'll be presenting later uh, at the end of SBC, so come, come to that, uh, is for to build auditable exchange or at least make some progress towards uh, towards auditing exchange behavior, and so we actually made up a a list of like all the bad things an exchange could do, and uh, you know some of those things were like oh they could steal your money but that kind of was already solved with like non custodial stuff, and uh, we settled on the problem of front running decided to focus on that, and um, and yeah so that's that's what this work focuses on. And it's really just an application of ideas that have like, really been around for a long time, but, uh, but we want to kind of build and implement this system as well. Um, so I don't have a slide for it, but if you don't know what front running is, uh, basically Alice makes a, tra makes a transaction on an exchange that's going to move the market, and your malicious exchange comes in and says, oh, that's going to move the market. I'm going to uh, you know, buy up some orders or you know, sell some orders. And uh, it turns out they can make a risk-free profit by placing their orders in front of Alice's order. Uh, so that's why it's called front-running, and uh, we don't like this. So let's try to stop it, or at least make it detectable. Um, so how do we do this, um, specifically front-running? So is there a way to prevent front-running altogether, which would be really, really nice? And there kind of is. Uh, turns out that would be commit reveal. Um, where you just take your, your order and you commit to it and you send it to the exchange and the exchange says, okay, I'm going to bundle all, all of these orders up and com like, you know, commit to them, publish on a bulletin board that all of these things are, are committed to and then everyone you know, in good faith reveals all of their orders but as it turns out, if one person does not reveal their order, then who knows what to do with that unrevealed order and also, the exchange can say that it didn't receive an order and just not release it, which there's no way to show that they didn't receive it or did receive it. So this is kind of an issue um, with commit reveal. So if we can't prevent it, can an auditor prove the exchange has front run? Um, not really, uh, unless you are able to prove that like, there is a cause and effect relationship between the exchange receiving an order at a certain time, which is still really hard to do, and the exchange putting another order in or some other order being placed before that order. Uh, it's just in general from like a systems perspective, it's not really very easy to do. Um, so if we can do that, can we prove the exchange is not front run? And in some situations, yes. With uh, clockwork, which is what our thing is called. So the key insight is use time commitments, which has been around for a long time. Um, and uh, specifically, there is a section at the end of this paper called Honesty Preserving Au Auctions. And while we don't use the construction described in time commitments, uh, at all, well, at all, but exactly, um, we do use the same sort of general idea of time commitments. Yeah, so we construct them slightly differently. And the other important thing is we record a transcript uh, just so that somebody else can verify the behavior. And we construct our protocol in such a way that it's easy to, to show if an exchange has not front run. Um, or it's, it's easy for the exchange to show that to an auditor. And so we do this by including a user attestation based on them knowing that they have not been front run, depending on when they receive messages and whatnot. Yeah, and so we just make sure that users can verify. It doesn't have to be some trusted auditor or anything. We just include that name because it's not a direct participant or an exchange. It's just anyone that wants to. So we have a bunch of uh, security goals. Um, I'm just going to go through these really quickly. Um, so. We want to sort of prevent some of the the things that uh, an exchange, the bad things an exchange can do, for something like commit reveal, um, through the so liveness is that thing that we were talking about where the uh, like one bad user can 
kill a commit reveal batch or, you know, binding execution, all of the valid orders will execute. Like, it doesn't matter whether or not, you know, they they tried to reveal or didn't reveal or whatever. So uh, this is these are basically all of our fixes to commit reveal um, that we want to satisfy. And hopefully that will get us a sort of proof of non-front running. And it's only really a proof in certain situations that are described in the paper. Um, but yes, so we just want this auditing. And there, we don't have order privacy or any, anything like that. Um, so first, there's, you have your exchange. They send a, uh, an, a batch ID. Uh, this is just for identification of where to send orders. Um, and so you also have the puzzle difficulty, which is uh, the, and they, they publish the matching algorithm. So users will also come up with this parameter, um, which defines when they will and won't sign a batch that the exchange will then publish. Um, I'm just going to, you'll see later what this is for. So then all the users send orders. Uh, just, this is just the, R, the like, RSW time of puzzle, everyone knows this. Um, and basically, you end up sending your order ciphertext, you send the modulus, and you send the message, or not, not the message, your, your um, M to the exchange. Uh, and this includes the trapdoor. So this is the important part where you sort of like a connection to time commitments, um, because there's sort of like, if you end up signing uh, this batch that the exchange will create, then the exchange can very quickly uh, decrypt orders. So it's an optimization that helps the exchange not solve everything. Uh, and this trapdoor is also really useful for users because you don't want to you know, have to decide 10 minutes in advance uh, what your order is going to be in order to place it in a batch. This, so this trapdoor, unlike some other things in VDF stuff, uh, it's really important, at least in, in this protocol. Okay, uh, for some reason the exchange is not showing up, whatever. Um, okay, so now that's the exchange up there, the blank space. <laughs> so the exchange will commit to it, they'll commit to this set of puzzles, uh, and they will sign the commitment, um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then they send it to users. Uh, okay, yeah. And then finally, uh, basically, users will check that this is uh, less than the amount of time that they decided earlier, and they will basically say, okay, if I know that I cannot have been front run, based on my knowledge of the speed that it would take me to solve a time puzzle with parameter t, right, if I know that they, they sent this in less than that amount of time, then I know that they have not front run. So that is what allows the user to then sign this, this commitment, and, uh, and if you get a lot of signatures from users, then auditor, auditor can go check that and be like, okay, well, if I know one of these users, I know they're a real person and not just a sybil made by the exchange, then I know that they have not been front run. And so for exchanges, this is a really important thing um, to be able to prove to somebody else. Yeah, so you would send a signature, it checks the time, and you know, but that person, you know, it took too long, or maybe they're, they have a better idea of, of how long a time lock puzzle is gonna take or something. Uh, and so they don't send it, but you know, some other people do. Oh, whoops. Uh, and so finally, the exchange solves all the all the time lock puzzles. Uh, they, you know, cannot paralyze a single time lock puzzle, but they can solve all of, all of the time lock puzzles in parallel. Um, yep. So go into the puzzle solver, get the results, and finally, uh, get sent to the users. And so, last thing, basically. The transcript is nothing special. It's just ag basically aggregating all of the messages sent in this protocol, and everything is signed, and you know, we're you know, using cryptography for all this stuff, so it's fairly easy to verify. Um, and so verifying that, uh, like let's say a user submits a malformed order, or their trap door is wrong, and they try to include that, uh, then basically everyone would have to compute to the to the T, um, if we didn't have VDFs, so we can just use VDFs uh, to help, like the exchange can basically help users in verifying its own transcript by using a VDF. Um, so yeah, 
So some future work, things to think about, stuff that you don't want to do. Uh, Exchange has to use a lot of cores, and we might want to fix this. Uh, we might want to, like the Exchange, if it has a thousand users in a batch, that's a thousand cores right there, uh, which is pretty expensive. Uh, so, you know, sort of an idea that we had is like, if there was some way to construct a public key that does not, for which the private key does not get revealed to until a certain amount of time, where everyone could encrypt to the public key, and that would help a lot because essentially for a batch of like 100, you're just doing one computation to get all of this data and you can sort of join in whenever you want with your order. Uh, so that's, I don't know, I have no idea how to construct this, but yeah. I think there is a construction here. Oh. <laughs> um, using the SRV yeah. Okay, okay, that's good to know. I'll look into that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. Any uh, questions? Or All right, thank you very much. Okay, cool.